Hi, this is Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic, and I'm recording this new version of a video I did about three or four years ago on how to use the standard Libsyn RSS feed and still be able to engage with a third-party statistics service for your podcast. And it's basically manually creating the podcast using an enclosure. And it's not that hard to do, a little bit of cutting and pasting, and it'll probably only add about one minute to your file. Now this works with free services like Blueberry.com, the free stats at Pod ProMed Network, and PodTrack.com, and there are others out there. So let's go into our new Lipson interface. The reason we had to make this changed video was that the interface had changed at Lipson, and I hadn't really thought about it, but it had changed, and it never occurred to me to make a new video until now. Let's go ahead and select New Post. We want to also go up, and uh, we want to make sure it's a text a post for the entry, but first we want to upload our file. So we're going to go back to Basic, and we're going to click blog file for download only. That's not going to create a blog post, it's just going to upload a file. And then you'll use your hard drive or access the FTP queue if you've uploaded that way, or perhaps you're using a URL. One of those three ways, click on that and put the file information in there and then click publish and it'll upload. So once that's done, I've already uploaded a file, so I've already taken care of doing that part. We'll go ahead and go to our previous posts, and sure enough, there's all these MP3 files that are there and available for you to access for a post. You're going to go ahead and click the links area there, and you'll see there's different things in the links area. The direct download URL, this is probably what you've used in the past. Also, an enclosure URL code and a permalink URL code. We want the enclosure URL code. That has the information in it we want, and this will allow us to manually create a podcast entry. So you copy that using Command-C or the Edit drop-down file menu, whatever you like, like to use to copy text. Copy that text from the enclosure area. Now, this is going to be what we do. This is the only extra piece of information that you really need. Okay, so how long did that take us to do? You're going to go back up and click New Post. Okay. We want to now click Text Post. Okay. We're going to flip it back over to Advanced on the little tab bar, a uh, little button in the top bar there. So we want to make it a text post, and then we're going to switch over to Advanced. Now, when we get Advanced, it brings up this selection. Now, you'll notice under Media, they're all grayed out. That's because it tells you a blog post, it's only text, it's not going to have any media files. So that's what that is. We'll go into our description and we're going to enter our blog information just like we always do for our description here. Uh, I'm going to type some things in here, a uh, podcast test episode, and down in the bottom I'm going to put in the description podcast test episode body because I want it to be a slightly different. I'm going to show you why because we're going to want to look at the RSS feed just to check it after we do it this first time to be sure. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Now you have all this other information to fill in. You fill out your normal blog entry. Go down to the bottom when you're done and advanced options and you're going to enter extra RSS tags. You're going to go ahead and paste that enclosure information there. Now you'll see this is all the code you need for that except that you don't have your third-party stats information in there yet. Let's take a look and see what's in this code. You'll see uh, a link in the middle there that's the link to your mp3 or your other media file and you're going to want to go ahead and I'll show you where that is here. If you look, um, you'll see that it's highlighted here, um, your MP3 file location on Libsyn servers. At the beginning of that, it says HTTP colon slash slash. That's a web code but that tells it it's a URL and how to access it. But uh, you want to understand that just after that, before the part of your uh, traffic URL for your media post, right after that slash, you want to put in your cursor, and you're going to paste in there your code, URL code given you by your stat service. This will be the same every time, okay? It's just recognizing that it's your podcast. You might have another set of HTTP colon slash slash in there. We only want one. You can't have two. So if it, you do have that part of the URL, you only need the second part of it. Get rid of that beginning HTTP colon slash slash so you only have one of them. Now you have your stats information there with a slash. Make sure there's a slash at the end of it. And then after that slash, 
a traffic link for Lipson to your MP3 file. Okay? So you should have both of those things there. Again, make sure the slash is in the middle and make sure there's only one HTTP at the beginning. This other information tells you how long this podcast is and also what type of file it is. And that's the information that is used by iTunes to put information out on, uh, they tell people how long your show is. Now we want to go ahead and click through to destinations and uh, the advertising tab here is not going to be used because it doesn't think there's a file in there. Okay, so it's not going to be able to play anything and you're not going to be able to insert any ad codes. That's important if, if you're going to use a third-party stat service. I haven't figured out how to do this so that you can still have the insert information. So you go ahead and publish it and you'll see that there's no media file URL there. Um, and you'll see that it's listed as a text post and then the media file below it. So as you post this over the coming weeks of your episodes, you're going to have a file, media file posted, then a text link, text post, then another media file, then a text post as you upload them in that order. But you'll see it only took an extra minute or two to upload the file, uh, access it as just a link, grab the enclosure, and then go make your normal blog post, just paste in that other section there. Let's go ahead and check this. We're going to go up and get our feed from the top, copy that, and then we're going to go over to a site called feedvalidator.org. You only really need to do this once in a while and, and the first time you do something like this. And you'll paste your RSS feed in there, click the button or hit return and see if it's valid. And you'll see, congratulations, it's a valid RSS feed. But you see all this yellow highlighted information. Don't worry about that. Generally, uh, this is for pure RSS specifications only. It doesn't really understand podcast styles and things that iTunes looks at. So it's going to say, this isn't typically what we want to see, but it doesn't break your feed. And that's okay. So as long as it says it's a, it says valid feed, you're okay. Let's scroll down here to the first place it says item. That is the first most recent post you've put in there. And you'll see that we have podcast test episode in the title. If we go down to the next set of text, we'll find in the middle there the body, podcast test episode body. That's where we have all the blog information or the show notes information. And if we go below that, we'll see our enclosure with our URL and our media direct built into it like we had post pasted in there. So it's all right there and our feed is valid. So we know that that works and uh, that's a great way to test. You should check your feed periodically if you're not sure. If you're having a problem, this is probably one of the first places to check and make sure your feed is working. The other thing you can do is go into iTunes and I always do this every, every single episode. Make sure it's downloading, right? You want to make sure people can get it. You go up to the advanced menu, drop down and click subscribe to podcasts. This is how you manually subscribe to podcasts on iTunes. You can do that. You don't have to go through the store. And you're going to go ahead and paste your URL for your RSS feed there. And lo and behold, it grabs your podcast. And if it starts downloading something right away, guess what? You did it right. So this is uh, the, the final check. I would also do this every single episode. Uh, if you aren't already doing that, uh, if you're not listening to your episodes, at least make sure your episodes download and try playing it and play the beginning and the end to make sure it's grabbing the whole file and doing everything right. Uh, it should be fine, but you want to make sure. But that's how you do it. That's how you set it up to go ahead and grab this information. You can get in touch with me if you like this file or anything. You can catch me on Twitter under the handle Podmedic, Facebook under the handle Podmedic, and of course you can find my videos on EMS and things like that over at mediccast.tv.